Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to the Very Vera Show. We are so excited to be entering season 12 of our show. And we've got so many great things we're gonna be doing together this season, but especially today. So every year, this time of year, I always celebrate my mother's birthday. This year, she would have been 106. So at the end of the show today, we're gonna to be giving you a special coupon code to get the cookbook for half price. We'll also have a very special deal on our bundle with the brand new cookbook. So we're doing a bunch of things today. We're also celebrating the fact that two new markets have joined us for the show. Birmingham, Alabama and Nashville, Tennessee. Look out y'all, we're coming to see you. Can't wait. And then the Fresh Market has also come on as our overall grocery sponsor. So I've got my bag all full of my groceries for today. I'm so excited. We're making four recipes. We're gonna start with Parmesan squash casserole. It's so good this time of year with squash in season. We'll move into Bitsy's Meatloaf, which is probably one of the number one recipes from the first book. We're gonna do a coconut cake that is so moist so creamy, you're gonna love it. And then finally, a new side dish, the roasted green beans that's from our brand new book. And then to make it even better, you see all these gorgeous plants on my porch? These came from Go Buy Plants, and they're making it so easy, all you have to do is go to the front door. So we've got a lot to do today. I'm ready with all of my groceries. Let's go get started on that Parmesan squash. All right, so the Parmesan squash casserole. People think about it around the holidays, but you know it's great all year long, especially in the summer when squash is in season. So we had a little bit to do in advance. We went ahead and washed the squash, cut it into one inch pieces, and then we did a Dutch oven with water and a steam basket because you're gonna lose some of the flavor if you boil the squash. It's much better to steam it. Once you put them into the pot, you're gonna let them steam for about 10 minutes. Fork tender is what you're looking for. And of course, they'll continue to cook in the oven. So we've got some wonderful ingredients here to go in this. I always use Hellman's mayonnaise in my recipes so that this recipe will not be greasy when you take it out of the oven, so I love that. I'm gonna to add to that my fresh market eggs that I've gone ahead and beaten in my measuring cup. Salt and pepper. And of course, I give you a measurement, but you can always season to taste. We have breadcrumbs, and these are just plain breadcrumbs because we want the seasoning to be what you put into the recipe. All right, Fresh Market always has their Parmesan cheese in the deli section, so be sure to look for that. This is really nice. And I'm gonna mix this together and this just really comes together really well. And you, now you see why it's called Parmesan squash, because that is a lot of Parmesan cheese in this recipe. All right, now we're gonna add in the green pepper and the spring onions. And you know, I'm not a real fan of green pepper, but I absolutely love it in this recipe because it's a little bit of a pop of color but it also has a really nice flavor with the squash. All right, so now let's put this beautiful squash in with it as well. And this is very tender, and like I said, it'll cut down. But if you wanted to make the pieces smaller, you can actually just cut them into halves or fourths before you put it in. But you know, it does make for a nice casserole because you can actually see the squash. Okay, so one of the things that we're very proud of is that this dish was sold in all of the Southeast Division Costco stores. So that was really a fun part of our business. All right, so once this is mixed together, I've gone ahead and sprayed my casserole dish with pan spray. And now I'm ready just to add this to the pan and I've preheated my oven to 325, and this is gonna cook for approximately 30 minutes. So like I said, the fact that the squash is kinda chunky really makes this nice. And the fact that there's so much Parmesan will also affect the fact that you don't wanna put too much salt in it. All right, 
So we'll get this baked. When we come back, we're gonna start on Bitsy's meatloaf. And if you are a meatloaf lover, this is probably one of the best recipes you've ever had. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Welcome back everybody and if you're just joining me, we are celebrating today. This is season 12. Honestly, I cannot believe it. It just seems like the other day that the local television manager here in Augusta said, you know what, we're going to give you a cooking show. And you know, 12 years later, I texted him this morning and said, I owe you so much because you believed in me and we are just very excited to be here. We thank all of you for being part of it. All right, so this is Bitsy's Meatloaf. This is probably one of the most favorite recipes in the first book. And my older sister, Bitsy, taught me so much about cooking. The difference of 10 years, she was a newlywed and I was a preteen. And so I would visit her and she would make all these amazing dinners. So I really learned a lot from her. Recently, she attended one of my book signings and we got this really cute picture made of the two of us with the meatloaf recipe in the book. All right, so this starts with the Fresh Markets Chuck that every Tuesday is on sale. So this uses a pound and a half, but it also uses a spicy pork sausage. So it has both meats in the recipe, which is one of the reasons it's a little different to me. So we're just gonna get everything combined and then I'll mix it together with my hands because we're kind of old school when it comes to meatloaf. Now I'm gonna add in just some plain breadcrumbs and one egg. All right. Now I've got salt and pepper, and again with salt and pepper, some people like more pepper, some people like a little bit more salt, but I've given you what I feel like is appropriate in the recipe. Now we've got some chopped Schumann Farms Vidalia onions, and these things are amazing. So sweet, diced up so pretty. Now I have marinara sauce, which just adds that moisture to the recipe and then Worcestershire sauce. All right, so I'll start getting it together with my spatula, but then you've got to really dive in with this. And you know, every Tuesday, the Fresh Market puts their chuck and chicken on sale. And so that's when you wanna go early, you know, because the crowd will form. So we're just gonna get all of this mixed and incorporated, and there's no better way to do it than to just get in with your hands. Of course, I washed my hands before I got started, but this is just a great way to incorporate everything into it. And you know, the egg is gonna hold it together. The bread crumbs give it, believe it or not, makes it a little bit moisture. If it's just meat and no um, bread in the recipe, it's not gonna be quite as moist when you slice it. You know, the other thing that's so good about this recipe is that you can make sandwiches out of it after you serve it for your dinner. The next day, there's nothing better than a meatloaf sandwich. All right, so I have sprayed an eight by four loaf pan. And you can see this loaf pan's got a little age on it. We've been using it for a long, long time. Meatloaf was another recipe that was made in volume at Berry Vera through the years. So now that everything is incorporated, we're just gonna start by adding it to the pan. And you can get some in and then you're gonna press it down because that's what holds it together um, when it's baking. And as the recipe will tell you, you're gonna drain some of the fat off along the way um, as you cook it. And then you're also gonna add a wonderful sauce that I'll tell you about when we come back from the break to the top of it. So this is gonna go into a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes. And in Vera's Corner today, I'm gonna to give you some of my favorite baking tips. And then when we come back, we're gonna get started on coconut cake. You don't wanna miss that. So I hope you'll stick around. Vera's Corner is brought to you by Tax Slayer. You know I love to bake, but it's really helpful that I know a few things about baking that the recipe doesn't tell you. So let me give you my top five tips so you'll be successful when you get in the kitchen. To find out if your oven has hot spots, spread out several pieces of bread directly on the oven rack, then bake at 350. 
Keep an eye on the bread slices to see which slices get darker quicker. The type of pan or baking dish you use makes a difference. Lighter metal browns more evenly than dark metal. Make sure you follow the instructions for the temperature of your butter. Your recipe might call for the butter to be frozen, room temperature, or melted. It may not seem like that big of a deal, but deviating from this recommendation in your recipe could completely change the texture of your final product. Finally, if you don't know how to properly measure flour, today is the day. Rather than drag your measuring cup through the bag or canister, you need to lightly spoon the flour into the measuring cup, being sure not to pack the flour. Continue to spoon until the flour is mounded over the top, then use a flat spatula or the back of a knife to level off the cup. Here's how much the weight of a cup of flour can differ if you don't spoon the flour in. I hope these tips will make you a more confident baker. Start free today at TaxSlayer.com. Welcome back, everybody, and I hope you enjoyed Vera's Corner. You know, now I know why I had to take chemistry to major in home economics, and hopefully those tips will help you in the kitchen as well. All right, so we got the meatloaf out of the oven. We drained some of the fat off of it. You know, that chuck is pretty lean. It's 80-20, but you still love to get a little bit of that fat off, and we made a wonderful sauce to go on top. So what that is, I kind of twisted the recipe. My sister's recipe called for ketchup, but I I always like to put my own twist on recipes. So we used a marinara sauce, French's mustard, brown sugar, and white vinegar. And you just mix that together and you pour that on top right those last few minutes before it comes out of the oven. And then reserve the balance of it because that could be poured on it when you plate. It makes for a really nice presentation. All right, so I've got everything on the counter that has to do with this cake. So what we did in advance of uh, getting this icing started, and I'll slow this down, to give you a little bit of background of the actual layers of the cake. So the coconut layer cake was actually featured in Veranda Magazine after I sent them cake for many, many years, but it wasn't until I sent this cake eight years later that they decided to write about our product, so we were thrilled. So what I did in advance was I got my oven preheated, I sprayed my pans, I used the parchment circles in the bottom and got those done. Then I creamed my butter and sugar for about five minutes. I added extra large eggs one at a time. I combined my cake flour, my baking powder, salt, and whisked that together. Then I added my flavorings to my milk and my coconut milk in a liquid measuring cup. I then alternately added dry and wet, beginning and ending with dry. And again, scrape the sides and the bottom of the bowl again, and then beat the batter for about seven minutes. And then when it's time to divide them between the three pans, just do a little bit at once and get that in the pan. You wanna spread the top, and then you're gonna tap those pans down just to get the air pockets out before you put that in the oven. All right, so the icing that goes with this is, is absolutely delicious. So this is cream cheese and butter that I've gone ahead and mixed together. And now I'm gonna add in my vanilla extract and my coconut extract. And that just adds a little bit more moisture, not to mention flavor. And now we'll start incorporating the confectioner's sugar and you, I love to use a smaller measuring cup when I'm doing this, just to get this incorporated. And obviously this will take a few minutes to do. So for the magic of TV, I went ahead and made some icing to get that ready. I've got my coconut that I'm gonna add to that before I finish, but I'm gonna turn this off for the sake of time and show you what I've done. So one of the secrets of our layer cakes was that we would put them on a half pan and trim the top. And for those of you that used to be customers of my cafe, you knew when you came to visit, you got a little bag of the trimmings as a favor when you left. So this is what is called the crumb coat. So I've put the layers together, I've put the icing in between and just covered it. And that's why you call it a crumb coat. And then to do the finishing, you're gonna do about a tablespoon 
and you start at the bottom and go straight up. So I will finish this during the break and we'll get that so you can see it. But when we come back, you cannot just go get something to drink because you don't want to miss this last part. We're going to talk about the cookbook, our special partnership with Go Buy Plants. So come back and join me in just a minute. Welcome back everybody and we have started season 12 with a bang. I'm so excited about the recipes we made today and I just wanted to walk back through everything that we did. Certainly being able to shop at the Fresh Market and partnering with them for this season, I'm so excited about it. We were able to get that chuck when it was on sale and you'll find lots of things that will help you make your meal planning and the meals that you prepare for your friends and family even better when you shop at the Fresh Market. All right, so we started with the Parmesan squash casserole and this just bakes up beautifully as you could see you could even cut it into squares or if you wanted to really do an unusual presentation you could use a biscuit cutter and make it into a circle so it does maintain its shape which is nice for preparation and for presentation all right so we also did the meatloaf the Bitsy's meatloaf and as I said I put a twist on it because she just used ketchup as her sauce and so I did a marinara sauce that had uh, mustard and brown sugar and white vinegar so it's got a nice kick to it put it on the top but you can also you could even incorporate some of it into the meat if you wanted to before you baked it. So that makes it really pretty. And in terms of the table setting and how you place it, your protein should always go at six o'clock on your plate presentation. And then finally, the coconut layer cake we did just turned out beautifully. Um, trimming the layers really gives you an even layer all the way up. And I made um, the Vera's specialty swirl when we iced it. So it's just a tablespoon of the icing and you go up the side and you just keep doing that. You cover up all of your layers. And then the kitty swirl that we do on top is we're noted for that. So then finally, the last recipe that I didn't do on the show that we did during the break is our roasted green beans. And this is very easy to do, really delicious. You want to rinse your beans. You want to snap the ends. You want to blanch it for two minutes. And that's where you get that intense green color. At the end of two minutes, you're going to remove those into an ice bath. And this stops the cooking process to maintain that wonderful green color. Then I made a wonderful sauce that had brown sugar, soy sauce. The recipe will be on our website at veryvera.com. Tossed all that together, roasted those beans, and to serve it, you put a little bit of sesame seed on top. All right, so we've tempted you with a lot of great food today, but now we're gonna tempt you with something else. So I would love to introduce Debbie Jones with Go Buy Plants, and you brought me something special today. I sure did. I brought the Endless Summer Summer Crush Hydrangea with the big pink bloom. Oh, it's so beautiful. And you know, generally speaking, that comes in a gorgeous box on your porch. So tell us a little bit about the company and how this process works. So Go Buy Plants is an online plant nursery and we ship our plants directly to your door. We take the guesswork out of it. All you do is just go to our online website and you purchase a plant. You could either send it to someone as a gift. Mm -hmm. I think you did that one I did. time. And then um, in a few days, it will show up at your door. So one of the ways that we take the guesswork out of uh, buying a plant online is we provide a link on our site that has Shop Your Zone, which is your hardiness zone. And this will list all the plants that will grow in your area. And that's important because our show does air you know all over the place so that's important and I will say that the packaging is so well done yeah. that it really arrives in great condition all right so we have a lot going on here today and yes. you're involved in this as well mm -hmm. so we only put this first book on sale once a year and it's in celebration of my mother's birthday and the code for this this time is Betty 106 she would have been 106 years Aww. old this gives you this book at half price we only do it once a year. But we have another option. If you will select the bundle on the website, which is the first book 
and the new book, you're going to get another $20 savings off of getting both books at the same time. But even better, y'all, you are putting a coupon. Yes, we are. I'm so excited about that. So there's going to be a very special coupon the minute you open it. And the good news is, and we've been talking about this today, is I love to do my planning in the fall. Absolutely. So this will be the perfect time for you to either spruce up your yard, to be ready to smell those tea olives that are in my front yard, the acuba that you can trim and use all year in different arrangements. But let's certainly want you to go to their website at gobuyplants.com yes. and look at everything they have to offer. Be sure to check those zones for where you're going to be. And, you know, we certainly want you to test these recipes. They're always on our website at verybeer.com. Debbie, I want to thank you so much oh, you. for coming today and for bringing me that beautiful hydrangea. I'm going to have to get my shovel out, get that in the ground. So remember, we always say on the Very Vera Show, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. Certainly you had good taste bringing me a special gift today. And I hope all of you will come back and join us next week.